Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be looking at Active Primary 3, the interactive whiteboard software from Prometheum. I've already produced one basic introduction to this software covering some of the tools like the pen and text tool, and today I'm going to be looking at the resource library. When you install the software, it actually comes in two parts. You've got the interactive whiteboard software, which provides you with access to the pens and text tool, for example, but there's also one or more resource banks which you can install. This contains images, audio, video files, and ready-made flip charts that you can just drag and drop into your own lessons. I'm going to be showing you how to use that today. If you haven't got this as part of your setup, you can log in to the Prometheum website and download it. To get started, I'm going to create a new flip chart. To open the resource library, all I do is click on this icon in the bottom right hand corner. You'll notice the bar changes at the bottom and it's now showing me some of the things I can drag and drop into my page. Now the resource library actually contains hundreds of resources, so it's really good that they've got a way of categorising them. To access the categories, we click on this button here and it reveals the various options that we've got. As you can see, it's grouped by curriculum area. So let's have a look in geography, for example, and then maps, and then general maps, and then finally Europe. As you can see, I've got some maps of the UK, which I can simply click and drag and place onto my flip chart page. These can then be resized according to how I want to use them. At the moment, I'm looking at the general resource library, which contains images. I've also got sound files, video files, and ready-made flip chart pages. Let's have a look at the sound files. As you can see, these are categorised, so we'll have a look at transport and train. Now unfortunately, the names aren't terribly helpful, so to find out exactly what they are, I need to click on one and place it onto my flip chart, and then click to have a listen. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at the video files now. Now, as you can see, we haven't got quite so many of these, and again, they're not really named in a very helpful way. So to work out what these are, I have to drag them onto my flip chart page, and then click on it to have a look. Okay, finally, let's have a look at the ready-made flip chart pages. This is the final button along the top there. So these are flip chart pages that have already been produced that you can simply place anywhere within your lesson. So let's have a look at, for example, some games. There we go, we've got a blockbuster style game here. Now this flip chart is set up with what's known as action objects, which makes it slightly more interactive. Let me show you how this works. We can click on the orange button and it makes that shape orange, or we could click on blue to make it blue. So we could rename these objects, we could put different letters in them to create our own blockbuster style game. Okay, let's have a look at another category of flip chart. Let's have a look at the group discussion frames and organizers. We've got a number of flip chart pages here that we can include. Let's have a look at this one here. So as you can see, we can click to edit the text at the top, and then we've got three columns where we can uh, add our ideas as we discuss it as a class. So as you can see, the resource library is an excellent way of very quickly creating stimulating flip chart pages. As I said, it's an enormous library, so it's worth knowing how to search for something in particular. To do this, we click on the Categories button, and then click on the Search button in the top left-hand corner. Let's say we wanted to search for anything relating to cats. I'll type in cat, and then I'll press Enter. But before I do that, you can see what it's going to search for. It's searching for any flip charts, any images, movies, text, pages, and even sounds. So to carry out my search, I press Enter, and let's see what it will find. As you can see, we've got a number of images of cats, which we can simply click and drag and drop onto our flip chart page. We've also got the word cat, which could be used during a phonic spelling lesson. And also, if I scroll through this, we've also got a sound file, which I can click and drag onto my flip chart. And then if I come out of design mode, we can have a listen to that. So that's how we can use the search facility to quickly find the resource we're looking for. Now, as well as the shared resource library, we also have our own resource library, known as My Resources. This is an excellent place to put things that you'll make regular use of. Let me show you how we do that by creating a new flip chart page. I'm going to create a number line, which is something I'd make a lot of use of, so I'm going to add it to my resource library. To begin with, I'll go ahead and create my number line. 
Okay, there's my number line. Now, before I can add that to my resource library, I need to group all of the elements together. So I need to group the question mark, the horizontal, and the two vertical lines. So to do that, I'll select everything by clicking and dragging around the whole collection. Then I can click on this button here, and that will create a group. To add this to my resource library, I go to the resources in the bottom right-hand corner, and I click on the categories button and change from shared resources to my resources. Then all I have to do is click and drag on the number line and pull it down. Now, as you can see, it's not actually allowing me to add this to my resources, and that's because I'm in present mode. So I actually need to change to design mode before I can do this. Let's try that again. As you can see, as I drag my number line down into the resource library, my icon changes, and when I let go, it's going to add this object to my library. It's asking me to enter a name for this resource, and it's worth doing this well because this is going to affect your search facility. So if I want to be able to search for number lines, I need to include number line in the name of this uh, object. So once I've added my text, I click on the tick button here, and it's been added as a resource. Now, every time I want to use that resource in my flip chart, I simply click and drag on it, and I can bring it up onto my page. Let me give you another example of where you might use this. I'm going to create some boxes for my different groups in class. So as you can see, I've created three boxes for my three ability groups in class. I want to add this to my resource library because it's something I'm going to make a lot of use of every time I'm preparing a new lesson. So to do so, I first need to group the items into one object. So I select them all and then click on the group button. I then need to open my resource library. As you can see, it's already open. And then I simply click and drag it into my resource library like this. I need to give it a name, so I'll call this Ability Groups. Click on the tick, and there you go. You can see it's now been added to my resource library. And all I have to do if I want to use that on a new page is click and drag it and place it onto my flip chart page. So there we go, that's how we can make use of the resource library to quickly create stimulating flip charts without having to recreate everything every single time. As I said, if you haven't got the resource library installed on your computer, you can download it. You'll need to register with the Promethean website. You'll need your serial number for your software for that. Then you can log in and download the resource libraries. So there we go, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks very much for watching.